everyone, and thank you for visiting another episode of Elite Noir's Firearm Review. I'm Dwight, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Springfield Armory M1A SOCOM 16 CQB with the Vortex Venom Red Dot. Now, the SOCOM 16 CQB has been around for a while, but it never really gets old. I'm going to tell you why I purchased the rifle, why I love shooting it, and what's in store for it next. Hint, hint. I got me this MK14 EBR chassis by Sage. I have an EOTech Voodoo scope, and I have a host of other parts. You know, but now that all the parts are in, off to the gunsmith it goes shortly. I'm looking to make that one gun combo CQB slash mid range out to 400 yards, should hit the fan type rifle. <laughs> but more about that in the next review. So my review isn't here to speak to the M14 classic firearm lovers or the AR and AK fans who think there's a better, cheaper 30 caliber solution on the market. There are so many reviews on this topic that I'm just not gonna even go there. I'm just gonna say this. When I first saw this wild, I thought, wow, Springfield Armory did a great job. It's a combination of their time-tested, reliable M1A and a modern tactical rifle with a punch. And that's because it's chambered in 7.62 NATO slash 38 Winchester. The first thing you'll notice about the SOCOM is that it comes with an Archangel polymer chassis and it boasts an adjustable stock that's mounted onto an extension tube that's the size of a standard AR buffer tube. Uh, what this means is that there's a huge variety of AR stocks available if you don't like what comes stock in the box. I, I happen to like it myself. I thought it was very slick, very cool. So it's a, a solid synthetic chassis that does not feel flimsy or cheap at all. And it has the M-Lock system for attaching rail pieces, lights, lasers, whatever you want to put up there, it, it's available. Uh, I have a bipod on mine and a red hand grip. There's also several quick release QD flush mount uh, ports for you to hook up to. Now, the gun sports uh, an AK compatible grip, which I actually like. Uh, it felt very comfortable to me. I, I have very big hands, so I, I like the way it, it felt in my hands. <clears throat> the built in iron sights, which I used only once, uh, are solid sights. Um, with the standard M14 rear sight, so you can adjust like, you know, windage and elevation and it shoots great right out of the box. So now this brings me to the Vortex Venom. Boy, did I have a hard time getting the elevation zeroed on this red dot. Only to find out once I called the manufacturer that it was a known issue. I'm like, what? Boy, was I upset because I wasted a lot of time and a lot of ammo trying to determine what the issue was. I have a lot of red dots, so I know how to zero a red dot. Vortex ended up sending me a shim that fit up under this plate with longer screws for the rear to raise up the rear a little so I could get it zero. So after shooting a lot of ARs, there are some things that I had to you know, get used to like right off the bat. Uh, the first thing was the safety. The safety is up on the front uh, and I can't say I'm a fan of this, but you get used to it after a while. You gotta have a strong finger to, to, to flick it on and off. Uh, second was the operating rod. It takes some getting used to. You're not going to be wrapping your hand around the, uh, the forehand like you do on an AR. Uh, hence, this is why I have the, the uh, red hand grip mounted under the bottom at, at, at six o'clock. Uh, third, the charging handle uh, is on the right. And so you got to get used to that. It requires you to like reach around to manipulate it or you'll have to remove your hand off the grip in order to charge the handle. You know, I, I come around up under and I manipulate it by reaching up under the rifle. 
Uh, fourth, I had to practice swapping out the mags with the way you have to like rock the magazine in, similar to like the AK. Now, I can switch mags on an AR much faster, but I've gotten pretty good with this now. I don't, I don't have any issues that I did when I first, first got the, uh, the rifle. So this, this multi-point muzzle brake on the uh, end of the barrel is very efficient. It reduces recoil a significant amount, which also means it's loud, as my camera person can, can attest to. So between the, the weight of the rifle and the brake, there's virtually no muzzle rise during shooting. But what was happening when I first got the gun is that I was being pivoted to the right. So the red dot would like move to the right and then come back on target. And I'm just like, you know, what is this? I'm not, I'm not used to this. So I had to get used to controlling this type of recoil swing, which is something I had to work on initially. Um, after about three or four sessions at the range, I was pretty comfortable with the rifle and I really started enjoying it. Uh, I'm used to shooting, you know, five, five, six caliber rifles, but shooting this full powered battle rifle with the largest 7.62 NATO caliber was a lot of fun. So, um, you know, after working out the kinks and, you know, getting used to the rifle, I went to work putting a lot of rounds downrange very rapidly, uh, and I experienced no malfunctions whatsoever. This thing just kept running and running and running. Uh, the, the SOCOM is very accurate at a close range with the red dot. Hence, the CQB, close quarter battle, is right in the name of the rifle. So this is where I spent most of my time testing. Uh, and, you know, I was in that 20 to 50 yard uh, range of shooting. I wanted to test how controllable this rifle was at a close range with all that power. I wanted to shoot as rapidly as I could while maintaining accuracy on my target. So I'm from Jersey, so I'm limited to like 10 rounds in the magazine for now. Hopefully that goes away by the end of the year. But I was able to dump the magazine into the center of a USPSA target at 20 yards consistently at approximately four seconds. Now, while the SOCOM 16 isn't a sh as soft shooting as the AR, you can definitely run it hard. And I was loving it once I got used to it. You know, I could really run the gun hard. So, in conclusion, I'm going to say that I think Springfield did a fantastic job of modernizing the M1A rifle. I think it's a one size fits all that slash one gun type of weapon, something that you could like clear a room with or, you know, reach out to 400 yards if you wish with, with a scope, of course. It's certainly enough gun for those civilians who are looking for a defensive option that offers plenty of punch and a host of tactical features. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next show. Deuces. Take care.